I, I brought this one specifically because th there is a chapter here for uh, decision makers, counsellors, decision makers. <clears throat> now, I just want to read this bit here. <clears throat> and everything in here, you, you have the websites and everything you need to get it. Uh, this is for decision makers from 2015. And it says, school districts, boards, medical health officers now know Lloyds of London will not provide liability coverage for injuries directly or indirectly arising out of, resulting from, or contributed to by electromagnetic fields, electromagnetic radiation, radio waves, noise, this applies to Wi-Fi and all wireless devices in schools. <clears throat> and I believe, I don't know that I'm correct, but I believe Lloyd's insure other insurance companies. <clears throat> and if I were a decision maker, one thing I would ask for in writing, because apart from the harm, which my brain can't even contemplate, um, apart from the harm, <clears throat> if you are taken to court over the death or an injury of a child and you have no insurance, no insurance cover, and I have had parents and people come to me and say, what do I do about injury and, and I say well there will be insurance or there will not be insurance depending on ask your school people or your council or whoever for the specific sentence in their policy that says we will cover your child whatever from electromagnetic illness there should be a specific sentence there that says that. If there is not, um, then I don't know the law, but uh, if as a decision maker you are taken to court, um, I have spent a whole day in court being cross-examined by an incredibly ambitious, tenacious barrister. And I was defending a girl who did not want to have an unhealthy child and wanted Wi-Fi taken out of school. And I thought after that, Andrew Goldsworthy, who works with ESUK as an advisor, he was the medical expert. <coughs> and I thought, I'm glad I was on my side because I can stand my ground and I thought if I were a decision maker against such a barrister I would be taken to pieces with the information that is there uh, and I think it's something that decision makers just need to bear in mind. <clears throat> um, trees, <clears throat> right. <clears throat> I'm quoting this from the magazine ESUK, which uh, I think there are, there are some copies over there, but it, it, it's quarterly or, or four times a year, and they do cover lots of legal aspects, and they have their doctors, scientific advisors, uh, and it is well worth getting, uh, and it's not expensive. But... In ESUK, there is an article here on trees subjected to low-level microwave radiation. Uh, 29 pages, the red oak, cherry, willow, black poplar, and all trees suffer the same. They all start losing their immune system once you bombard them with communications microwaves. <laughs> Trees are designed to pick up radiation. 
They are not designed to pick up microwaves. They do not like microwaves. Even children in school do experiments with watercress near cell phones or with microwave water. Uh, it, it's patently obvious that um, any tree does not like microwaves. And the moment you start microwaving a tree, two things happen. First is the tree starts to lose its immune system. And secondly, I did say there were three species on Earth that I know of uh, that are impervious to microwaves. One of them is bacteria, microorganisms. They seem to thrive under the energy from microwaves. I don't know why. I have had it explained to me by a professor, but I couldn't understand what he was saying. But two things happen with trees. First, the bacterium start to thrive and invade the tree. And secondly, the tree starts to lose its immune system. And it's only a matter of time. Um, here, <clears throat> where 5G is going up, all around the world, where 5G is going up, trees are coming down. The reason is <clears throat> trees inhibit the progress of 5G. 5G is not a big around circular wave that you get from transmitters. 5G is a beam, sort of a cross between a torch and a laser. It is a beam, and that beam has trouble going through a tree trunk or the density of leaves, especially if they're wet, <clears throat> and especially along roads. I have had calls from all over the world <clears throat> um, saying, Barry, why are they cutting our trees down? And I say, is 5G going up? Yes, there is your answer. In Malta, the lady that rang me said they're cutting the trees down and the reason is that motorists can see better. In uh, the USA, when they're just not giving an explanation, they're just cutting them down. Sydney is the only place I know, Sydney, Australia, where they're telling the truth and the application into the government is the submission to the government 5G inquiry. Sacrifice trees for network performance and overwhelming numbers of small cells. In Australia, they've just said, if you want 5G, we cut the trees down. Simple as that. <clears throat> Here, our local paper, or my local paper, out at Bobby Tracy, um, the advertiser here, uh, we are culling. Now, the reason given to us, uh, we are culling in the Teenbridge area, that I come under Teenbridge, 90,000 trees for or for, to stop the prevention of dieback. I don't know what dieback is, I'm not a tree expert. Um, but we are cutting down 90,000 trees and we are also cutting down, um, it is 440,000 trees along the road so that they do not pose a danger to motorists. Now, I wrote a letter to the newspaper along with a lot of other people, mine is here. And I've said, is it, is it a coincidence that we have to cut down 440,000 trees suddenly posing a danger at the exact location that 5G needs to go up on the lamppost? 5G has to go up about every 100, 150 metres. <clears throat> um, magazines, I'm not the only one with research. <clears throat> There is a, an article here <clears throat> that birds, bees, insects, trees, 
the migration of animals, colony collapse, a big study on aspen trees. There are 20 studies here, proper university studies on all of these. Um, and it is the same thing really. Uh, all of those, you suppress the immune system and for the animals, the navigating animals, the ones that use the sun or the earth's magnetic field, even the creepy crawlies that go along the ground, um, the creepy crawlies that go along the ground, they use navigation uh, from the earth and from the sun but for the scientists here, I'm talking about the uh, cryptochrome pigment double electron absorption system that has been published in Nature for robins. And we know the other birds have it, the other animals have it. Um, animals lose their immune system, all animals, and those that use the sun or the Earth's magnetic field, they become disorientated. Uh, migrating birds get lost, uh, butterflies get lost. <clears throat> and you have uh, quite a lot of harm, particularly on insects. Insects, uh, they have a large surface area to body volume and their surface area absorbs more radiation than the body can hold. It's known that one of the 5G frequencies when it was tested on a bee just absolutely saturated the bee. The bee lost its immune system and the whole thing turned to pus inside. Um, <clears throat> now, I'm going to mention just a couple of studies here. <clears throat> Two studies costing 30 million euros over a good 10, 12 years found an increased cancer East increased cancer tumours in animals exposed to phone mast radiation. <clears throat> okay. um, animals facing extinction have been reported Animals facing extinction have been reported here in India, Netherlands, Japan. Up to 40% of hives lost. Uh, insect extinction from, in Germany from study by entomologists. Uh, and, and so it goes on. Nobody is immune from this. <clears throat> okay. I have given two, the Glastonbury Festival, I have given two of the Glastonbury Festival environmental lectures. Uh, you're welcome to, to come round and get them if you wish, but one of them um, has over 8,000 research articles <clears throat> on animals and a 20-page laboratory study citing the suppression of the immune system from ordinary low-level microwaves on cows, cats, dogs, hamsters, whales, birds, bees, bats, butterflies. <clears throat> Over 8,000 studies there. <clears throat> the, 
The second one I gave, the, the first one was predominantly bees. The second one was animals from all species. I quoted 14 properly, independently, peer-reviewed university studies saying the same. And this isn't a UK problem. There's a, a lovely gentleman here um, sends me a picture of his hives every year. He is a priest. He is a priest uh, living up in the mountains, the Rockies and the Colorado Mountains. And he sends me a little letter every January uh, with all of his hives. And to show this isn't just an English or UK problem, they are fighting a battle. The beekeepers are fighting a battle. And every year he tells me what he's doing. They're putting special protective coating on or doing this or doing that or moving them. But he sends me a note saying what he's doing to try to protect his bees along with all of the other United States uh, beekeepers. <clears throat> now, I want to come finally on animals to a study here. To a study here. Right, I've got, I know where I am. <clears throat> this is probably the biggest and most comprehensive and legal study. <clears throat> this is a 15-year study, hundreds of papers, a 15-year study, Mount Nardi and Mount Matheson World Heritage Site in Australia. World Heritage Site in Australia. <clears throat> the study was for, and this is a legal study, <clears throat> for the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. <clears throat> and the conclusion over Mount Nardi, Mount Matheson, they only had 105 transmitters, which isn't that many, over 15 years, <clears throat> and I've never seen anything described like this before. They said, <clears throat> over the last 15 years, this affects not only the top of the life chain species, but they are devastating the fabric of the community of the world her heritage causing genetic deterioration in an insidious, massive, and ever escalating scale. <clears throat> to truly understand what these studies reveal is to stare into the abyss. And I've, I've never seen the word abyss in a scientific paper. <clears throat> and I thought, I'll just look it up in my Oxford dictionary. Um, to get the proper meaning, because this is coming here with our nature. This is coming here. Um, and under my Oxford Dictionary, under abyss, it is an abyss of despair, a catastrophe, primal chaos, hell, and a bottomless chasm. Now, you can choose any of those. Um, <clears throat> but it doesn't look good. <clears throat> now, I summarised the whole of the document, <clears throat> and I, I'm, I've, I've summarised the document down here, but these are groups of species. These are not species. <clears throat> Some of these are 66 and 86 species. Um, <clears throat> And when you run down this whole list of species, the common words appear. They either migrate and they won't come back. 
they exhibit unnatural behavior, and then you have gone, 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 retreated to another area, rarely heard, um, gone, gone, moved to the valleys, uh, and, and we're going right down with birds, butterflies, wasps, ants, termites, bees, frogs, you name it, they're all there. <clears throat> um, and those that haven't gone, said so the ants have become aggressive, but the moths, butterflies, ants, bees, flies, they are down around 80%. And some of the other creatures here, uh, like the grey thrush, they list as rare, and there are several rares. But the problem is not whether they're rare, but whether you have enough species left to regenerate. And this is before the 5G satellites start coming overhead and beaming down on them. <clears throat> All of what I'm doing now is 5G. And I have a, an important quote here because I think it can be useful from Bug Life. And I want to tie it in because there may be a solution to this. And this is published in 2018. However, the charity Bug Life warns that despite good evidence of the harms, there was little research ongoing to assess the impact or apply pollution limits. That is not true, actually. Um, I've quoted nearly 40,000 research papers. ESUK magazine publishes animal studies every time it comes out. There is generally one a day, but I'm not criticizing bug life because I think one of the answers to this, and I thought about that sort of only yesterday, I thought, how can we sort of solve this here? I have no authority and no status. And whoever I try and reach um, will never reply to my letters and I can't get through to them. But charities like Bug Life and the charities that control birds and the charities that look after the woodlands, they have, I don't know what you call them, but people who control, what's the word I'm looking for? The, who the, the, the people who, like Prince Harry and all those. Patrons. patrons, that's it, thank you. They have patrons. <clears throat> and if, and this will be going out, if the people who have animal charities and tree charities, if they go to their patron and they can ask their patron for me to come to them, I don't care where I go, my own expense, if I can go to the patron just for an hour, the patron, although the patron may not be able to do anything, the patron may be able to meet somebody at a social event that I would never even be let in the gate to, but it would meet somebody at a social event and say, hey, we've got this bloke here, you really want to talk to him, and we may be able to get a decision made. That is the only way we, I think we can actually get a handle on this, <clears throat> because the industry is immensely powerful. Uh, they stand aside for nobody. They have the money... They have tens of trillions of dollars. They can buy anybody. They can buy the scientific results they want. <clears throat> and finally, the last thing on trees that I think is immensely important, because the moment these went up, we started to lose our trees. And I, don't, I haven't seen the research, but I bet if anybody starts looking you will see that tree diseases are slowly creeping up over the last 
20, 25 years. <clears throat> they have to. But what people don't understand about trees, <clears throat> and I'm going to put this very briefly, <clears throat> 70% of a fish is tree. The reason is when the trees shed their leaves, all of the broken down goodness gets washed into the streams, the rivers, the sea. It is fed on by microorganisms and bacterium and they get to fed on by bigger things and bigger things, the food chains, the food webs and into the fish. And any fish, any 70% of a fish is generally tree or the goodness from a tree. But there is a, a very important fact here. Among this enormous chain of microorganisms, you have tiny little microorganisms called cocolithopores. <clears throat> and they do their share of feeding and they are fed on. But they produce one important molecule. Cocolithopores produce a molecule called dimethyl sulfide. It is the only molecule known at this point in time. The only molecule known because it drifts out of the water into the air. And this is the only molecule, molecule known to take part, and that is necessary, in cloud formation. Now, if you go and cut down all of the trees in there, I think we're going to cut down 70 million or something. <clears throat> you cannot replace 70 million trees with 70 million saplings. The average age will be about 100 years, and the saplings will not do the same job. They will not absorb the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere for a start. <clears throat> now, if you cut down the trees, you are cutting down the formation of clouds in the atmosphere, which means you will get droughts. It is as simple as that. We cannot go round cutting down that many trees if it isn't necessary. And the only way to have 5G is to cut down trees. So there is a balance there and it needs to be known to somebody. <clears throat> now, with 5G, I'm going to finish on 5G. <clears throat> In, when I spoke in Totnes not too long ago, just before Christmas, uh, somebody was disagreeing with me, saying, we don't have that and we don't have that, and no, we don't. But it doesn't say that we will not have it. <clears throat> um, there is a lot more to 5G than just putting up little boxes on lampposts. <clears throat> 5G is the new generation. <clears throat> it is not a wave, it is a beam. It is going to be used by around 53 organisations in this country, plus the secret services, plus the military, plus the American bases and their frequencies. There are quite a lot of frequencies that people don't know about that are going up when you have a 5G transmitter. And most of them are secrets. <clears throat> In fact, there are a lot. And 5G is going to merge. When I look at the frequencies, the spectrum across the whole range, 5G is going to merge basically with Wi-Fi 6. And they are already producing 6G. 5G and Wi-Fi 6 are getting very, very close together. They are going to be uh, used in unison. <coughs> right, I need to keep these in order, or I should be a silly boy. Um, <coughs> Right, here we are. <clears throat> now, for decision makers, 
for decision makers, two of the world's leading professors in this area wrote a letter to all of the Nordic prime ministers. It is a brilliant letter. I wish I had the skill to write this letter. I, I certainly don't. It is a brilliant letter. <clears throat> <clears throat> But before the letter, I just want to, what do I want to do? I want to read the legal opinion from an international attorney at law office regarding 5G. This is for decision makers. And it says, and you are welcome to pop out to my house and get all this stuff. It says, a, le a international firm of a law, a law firm. It is the conclusion of this legal opinion that establishing and activating a 5G network as it is currently described would be in contravention of the current human and environmental laws enshrined in the European Convention of Human Rights, the UN Convention on the Rights of the Child, EU regulations, and the Bern and Bonn Conventions. <clears throat> and going through documents, I have found, and these mean absolutely nothing to me, the UN Convention 1989 each state, and we come under the United Nations, each state has a legal responsibility to protect children to ensure maximum development. Articles 19 and 6. If you want to go to your school and, school and quote the law, there you are. The Children's Act 1989, Part 3, Section 17. There is a legal obligation on local authorities to protect children against harm or the risk of. This stands apart as a likelihood or perceived risk is all that is necessary. It does not need proof. I believe that this only applies, and I'm, I'm not sure, to children who are in care, children who are fostered or adopted. But every school has one of those anyway, I would imagine. You have the Nuremberg Code, UN 1950, Article 7, prohibit, prohibits any experiment without consent. 5G is an experiment. In fact, all of them are experiments. Tetra Airwave is an experiment. But under the Nuremberg Code, any experiment that affects you bodily or your health is illegal unless you give your consent. There is only one exception, and I've only known it to be done once. Any doctor can experiment on his or herself. That is the only exception. That's part five. <clears throat> Under EU law, a strategic environmental... Now, whether we are agreed whilst we were under EU law, I don't know. A strategic environmental assessment should be carried out before 5G. <clears throat> and... If there is a problem and it wasn't carried out, the polluter, in other words, the decision maker, pays the principal or the costs for the cleanup. And that can be millions. A legitimate government must preserve the right to life, liberty, health of all of its citizens. That is the Treaties of Civil Government, Second Treaties, Chapter 2. And finally, the Health and Safety Act, 588 Law in this country, 1st of July, 
2016. <clears throat> Employers must protect those of higher susceptibility, monitor health for electromagnetic radiation, both thermal and not thermal. For example, auditory, auditory sensory disturbance, change in brain function. That is the law. <clears throat> The letter from the two professors <coughs> to Nordic populations <coughs> that it is a mistake to assume that the populations are experimental guinea, guinea pigs for an ever, a largest ever biologically experiment, sorry, I'll start it again. Experimental guinea pigs for the largest ever biological experiment on humans. Such experiments are totally unlawful according to the Nuremberg Code, the Declaration of Human Rights, the Declaration of Children's Rights. According to the polluter pays the principle, uh, the polluter plays the principle, has to pay for all harm they have caused to humans. <clears throat> now, an experiment was carried out <clears throat> on 5G. An experiment was carried out in Russia. And I'm going to speed up these last bits. <clears throat> In 1977, I have the paper, <clears throat> an experiment was carried out on animals and humans using 5G. I won't go into the units, but the radiation level, the unions, the <coughs> humans and the animals were subjected to was at a level of 62. They were subjected to a level of 62 for 15 minutes a day for 60 days. In other words, 15 hours. That's it. <clears throat> you can legally, under the International Commission and our government, under the thermal regulations, <clears throat> you and all of the animals and all the trees if 62, and I'm going to list the illnesses caused from a level of 62, you can legally be given for 24 hours a day, non-stop, forever, a level of 140, more than twice. The professors listed <clears throat> damage to the skin, liver, heart, brain, adrenal glands, blood. The fetus, children, stem cells, human sperm, honeybee. <clears throat> and that was just from one expect one paper. There's the paper. It's a top secret paper from Russia uh, that I had sent to me. Um, so with 5G, um, I, I, I can't really, if I can show it to you very quickly, um, if I can find it very, very quickly. There we are. <clears throat> um, with 5G, on, as I hold it up to show you, on the right is a normal transmitter, and on the left, as I show it to you, you have the, the pulse <clears throat> of the 5G signal. And you can, if you want, you can get your... There's an excellent article on 5G. This is from ESUK magazine, <clears throat> which you can download from the internet. Um, this is a really good, because it goes into the frequencies and everything. Um, if you want it, it's the ESUK magazine, summer 2019, volume 17, number two. And if you can't remember that, uh, give me a ring tomorrow and, and I'll have it by the phone and I'll tell you. Uh, 
Um, and one last thing about 5G, and this isn't known by most people. Uh, two things. One is that there is a paper by the World Health Organization that one of the 5G frequencies is known to cause eye damage and skin cancer. That is published. And there is something which is being tried. I, I, I get lots from the universities <coughs> because, believe it or not, the university people developing this are more scared about what they're doing. Um, whereas I'm prepared to take the risk. Uh, there is the mathematicians and physicists will know this. Um, it is called the if I can remember it, it's called the Bruin precursor, is what is being tried out. It is a one second pulse that will precede the laser beam. It is a one second pulse that will precede the laser beam up to 10 gigabyte in strength. And you really, really don't want anything like that flashing across your eyes or your skin. Uh, nothing does. <clears throat> that is being tried out uh, to, as a burst of energy so that you can download a whole movie or whatever. Now, just to finish off, there, it's not all gloom and doom. There, there is a very simple answer to this, all of this. There is a solution. <clears throat> All you have to do is run cables. Many countries, they don't have smart meters that use Wi-Fi. All of the smart meters run off cable. The, all of the cables into the schools, all of the Wi-Fi in the schools, or well, it's not Wi-Fi, it is cabled from source. There are no microwaves in the air. If we took the trouble to run cables, just like telephone cables, everybody could have everything they wanted, even better, more secure, and better and faster. But we have 500 companies that are immensely powerful. They are pushing the Wi-Fi because they're getting as much money as they can. And this is how they are progressing. But the easy answer is just to have cable. If we run a cable along a forest, the trees are happy, the animals are happy, everybody is happy, you can have them into the schools. And if we turn down all of the transmitters, just turn them down, so that only the emergency services need them, if you're in a car and you break down in the middle of Dartmoor, you can ring. If we just had that system, which is what it was originally designed for, there would be no problem. But the problem is, and was unforeseen in the 70s, this system has been hijacked by children and addicts and everybody else, and the use was not thought up before they release this and they are chemically and physically addictive and I have articles from Scientific American Mind that show that children will demonstrate severe aggression severe aggression where a child has threatened to murder her parents if they so much as touched her equipment um, and a child has punched the mother in the face for touching the equipment, we're getting into that stage. <clears throat> um, but there is a solution, uh, but the problem with the solution, and we go right back to the very first document, you will lose profit. And this really all comes down to money. <clears throat>